Hi and welcome back to the Nordic Watch channel. In this video, a tutorial on how to shorten the bracelet on a Seiko Sumo. In other words, a video on how to shorten a Seiko bracelet with the infamous pin and color system. Uh, this is the first time for me ever uh, adjusting a bracelet with this pin and color system. So uh, this will be an interesting video. I'm trying to keep it pretty short. Um, if you're a viewer that is considering doing this by yourself, I'm going to make a few assumptions. So only going through the essential things about what is different with the pin and color system to uh, more traditional bracelets. And just as a bit of uh, extra encouragement or information, I was putting this off for a long time. I had not heard any positive things about the pin and color system and I was kind of anxious about doing it because I thought it would be a real pain. But actually, now that I did it, it's really easy. And uh, if you're at all considering that uh, you might be able to do it, I'm sure you will, because it was actually pretty easy. And just to show you what we're dealing with here, I'm going to talk about the pin and collar. So this here, the small part is a collar, and this is the pin, just so we're clear on that. And here, if we look, closer at the bracelet. On the arrow side here we can see that we have a pin and it is surrounded by a collar. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need a pin that is small enough so that we can push the pin out without that pushing the collar. So that has to be thin. And when we're putting it back, we're going to need a pin that is thick enough to um, push the collar. When we're pushing back the pin, that the collar won't pop out. So we're pushing back and we want to push on the collar and not just the pin as we did with the thinner one. So let's get to it. And I recommend you also have a pair of tweezers because the collars are insanely small, so they're easy to lose and really hard to handle with your bare hands. Starting off with the thin pin, we're going to take the bracelet and um, I'm just going to do this by freehand. So pushing out this pin like that. And let's see if we have caught the collar with this pin also. Yeah, so there we have the collar. Be careful with that, not to lose it. Pulling the pin out. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one. Just like that. This time we didn't get the color, so there we have it. Putting those aside, we won't be needing those anymore. So now attaching this part back, we're going to take the pin. And what we want to do, of course, is push it back the way it came with the narrow side first. We have a thicker side here on top. This is going to be easier said than done with these gloves and etc. It's always more difficult to do things in front of a camera. There we go. Next up, we want to grab our collar. Like so, focus. And insert it the way it came out. Like so. 
And actually something that's pretty good at this point is a ballpoint pen because it's a pretty good form to push back against the collar. So I'm just going to press that against the collar and insert the collar properly. Now you can see the pin is protruding out here a bit. So I'm going to just try to push that with my finger to get some initial um, friction there. Like that. And now I'm actually going to do this with the pen. So now uh, taking a pin like this and I'm going to push a little bit harder and push from the other side using the pen. Apply some force. And I think we're good. So now you can see we have the collar and the pin there and just the pin here on this side. And that should be nice and secure. And just to further, further clarify so that nothing is unclear here because of uh, maybe the camera angles aren't the best possible. This is the link here and you can see the arrow on this side. And what's going on when we put this pin back is we slide it from this side in and this pin does not go that easily into the collar which is why or well of course otherwise it wouldn't have enough friction to keep the bracelet together so that's why we have to take the pin and push back <clears throat> while at the same time we are pushing the pin inside the collar and that's of course not going to work here when they're not in their respective holes but you get the point i think that's pretty much all you need to know in order to adjust your seiko sumo or monster pin and collar bracelet hope you found this video useful and if you did give it a like if you have any questions or comments drop them down below i always answer and if not uh, i will see you in a next future video thanks for watching bye bye